So as you can see from the title of the video, this is just going to be kind of sent in Odysseus's journey. Um, why did I pick this? I've no idea. Just thought it would be interesting just to do it, you know, a little narrative. A little nod to a literary great story by Homer, obviously, there. Um, so yeah, that's that's this. So I'll just go straight into it with, the, with that introduction. And as you can see, we're walking by the walls, the great walls of Troy. Which is where Odysseus and his, his folks were. They were fighting a war there. Um, because he had some sort of relation to Helen of Troy. Maybe he was in love with her or something. I'm not going to go too much into the details of the story, obviously. Um, but yes, um, uh, this is where the journey starts. They're obviously fed up and they want to go home. And um, what I've picked for that is Nishane's 100 Silent Ways. Why that? Well, first of all, Nishane are a Turkish company. And that's where Troy is. But obviously, what they've got in their mind is just getting away from the war. Getting away from all the death and, and the horrible things that have gone on. Although, um, apparently, Odysseus was one of the people who thought of the Trojan horse. According to I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yes, so A Hundred Silent Ways is that lovely, beautiful mixture of flowers, you know, tuberose, it's sweet spices, it's beautiful, warm, it's a warm hug of a floral fragrance. It's got a lovely musk in it and it just takes you probably to the sunshine and the, the warm embrace of the sweetness of being home, isn't it really? I think that that's um, probably a really powerful thing to these war-weary soldiers and Odysseus himself. Obviously dreaming of their wives and whatnot back home, who again might be smelling of the kind of sweet flowers and that. So yeah, um, for Troy, the beginning of the journey, I have picked Nishane's A Hundred Silent Ways. So they then set off on the journey, obviously in their little ship and stuff, and uh, the gods send a big wind which blows them a bit off course and they end up in the Sikone, where the Sikones live. Probably not how you say it, but the Sikones or whatever. Anyway, the point is, they land there and they, um, they have a bit of a, you know, the soldiers, so they go around ransacking, um, annoying the locals, um, and even worse than that, they start stealing the food and gold and, and stuff like that. So, obviously, Odysseus is not happy about this, but still, and some of the people want to stay there. But they annoy the locals so much that the locals then start to sort of a, attack them and um, quite a few of them are killed. So it's quite a, it's quite a grim place, it's, you know beautiful like this full of the the docks and uh, there'll be lots of uh, nice structures uh, but they just start to behave bad so the, yeah the fragrance I've picked for that is Kajal's Lamar now why have I picked that because it's the gold bottle is quite symbolic isn't it uh, the quite blingy gold bottle and that but it's this mixture of these dark, exotic, beautiful, rich fruits. It does take you to kind of a land of plenty. All the kind of lovely sweet spices again. So it shows like it's a, a, it will be the fragrance of a developed kind of uh, rich, happy culture. Which obviously would be very attractive to, to these people who've been at war. They're not bad men necessarily they're just gluttonous and on the way home and some of them like say much prefer to stay in this land of plenty why wouldn't they except that they're stealing it obviously aren't they now this plays a part later on as we get into the story because obviously this angers the gods because it's not really uh, the best behavior from people is it but yeah, I'm keeping it brief as possible to get through it all. For for visiting this land, I have picked um, Lamar from Kajal. So next up, um, they come across an island, an island of the Lotus Eaters. So Odysseus sends a few men forward, I think about three men, to explore this. He's a bit more wise to it. 
Anyway, the men don't seem to come back, so he, he goes on to the island. And it turns out that the locals have given them these this kind of lotus nectar, which is kind of enchanting, and they forget their lives and all of that, and they just want to stay on the island. Um, and obviously Odysseus has to convince them to then come along with him again. Um, so, so it's quite, yeah. But an obvious choice for the fragrance for this one is uh, Nectar of Love from April Aromatics, which is all these kind of floral nectars, juicy, sweet, intoxicating. It's just beautiful. It's like, like I compare it to being a bee going flower to flower. And I think that just perfectly fits this. This just needs to be a brief one. It's a brief stop. But yeah, it's just the, the magic, the power of the nectar kind of intoxicating you and just making you forget the world, really. And I think that is a perfect fragrance for this. Obviously, uh, he does, I think he convinces the men to come back with him again. And therefore, the island is known as the island of the Lotus Eaters. Right, thanks. And the fragrance, of course, uh, Nectar of Love from April Aromatics. So the next uh, stage of the journey, the next island, as you can see, we're in the labyrinth of a cave here. They land on the island of the Cyclopses. Um, and as they seem to never learn the lesson, they go down into a cave, they find some cheese and lamb and whatnot. So they start munching on it. And then uh, home comes Polythemus. Polythemus? Polythemus. Polyph whatever. Come, comes home that um, lovely Cyclops. He's actually the son of Poseidon as well. But anyway, um, he obviously traps them in there and uh, starts munching on them as a bit of a bit of a feast. Um, and anyway, they stay tra trapped in this cave. But uh, he's a bit wily, old Odysseus. So he offers some wine to uh, to Poly Polyph Polyphus and. Um, it obviously makes him fall asleep and then obviously when he's asleep uh, Odysseus stabs him in the eye but before that he's told him that his name is nobody that's important but yes he stabs him in the eye so then the Cyclops is running round ah, ah! and then the other Cyclops is, 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 come come in and they're like what what the heck's going on here lad and um, he's like nobody stab me in the eye nobody so they're like, uh, well, what, what are you screaming about for? Anyway, um, the, the next morning, um, he wakes up and they hide under some sheep and, and uh, escape that way. So what fragrance have I picked for that? Well, it's actually quite easy for me because there is a fragrance that smells like wet sheep or wet goat to me. And that is Oud Cashmere Mood from uh, Maison Francis Kirkjean. It's like this dark, animalic kind of Oud. And it does have that, uh, like a real cashmere smell about it, but it's like a damp, you know, like the sheep's been out in the rain and it's really dark and damp and, and musky. And I think that's perfect for this. So yeah, for the Cyclops, um, Polyphemus, and their visit to that island, I've picked Oud Cashmere Mood because of its smelling of damp sheep. Right, folks? Thanks. So next, they end up on this beautiful island of Aeolus and meet the god Aeolus, the god of the Ro uh, Greek god of wind. He's quite kind to them, hospit hospitable, um, puts them up for a week, you know, looks after them, gives them some food and what have you. And um, he very kindly uh, donates a little gift to uh, Odysseus, which is a bag of wind, which um, he tells him not to open till obviously they get back home to Ithaca um, which is a very nice you know a nice gesture so they, they trot off on their merry way all bellies full and all feeling happy and set off on their journey anyway as the ship trundles along some of the people on the ship get a bit suspicious they, what's this what's in this bag what is it and uh, so they open it thinking that it might be some gold and obviously that opens, um, this is where can of worms comes from, in, in, it's a similar thing in Greek. They open that and obviously all the winds and the storms and everything come out and there's a big massive storm. And just as they're getting closer and closer to Ithaca, they're blown back. Um, everything's windswept and destroyed and what have you. 
So yeah, um, anyway, what fragrance have I picked for that? No, you're wrong, it's not Windflowers. Nobody needs to be sort of subjected to that. It's Mega Mare from Auto Parisi. The reason I picked that is if you've ever sprayed it, it is, um, it's not my cup of tea, I'm gonna be honest with you. But it's this huge, massive coastal blast of, of sea air and it's it's marine and it's it's ridiculously salty it will be like a storm at the sea and it kind of lingers and blows you away for, for ages so i think that's the perfect fragrance for this little part and a great fragrance for aos himself obviously he's living by the sea there so yeah for this little section for aos i have picked mega bear from auto parisi so they kind of um, end up on this island where they're washed to and it's full of these uh, peoples, these giants called Lestragonians maybe. Um, and these giants end up actually being uh, cannibals um, and the the king eats three of his crew and that. So obviously they're not too pleasant and uh, as they're trying to flee, as they're trying to run away they throw bricks and bricks, stones and rocks at the uh, ships and sink obviously sink some of the ships but they do manage to get away in the end but obviously this is a um, quite a sinister um, unpleasant place which is where they end up um, but the fragrance I've picked for that now this is dark but where do you go with this so I've, I've tried to keep it a bit light and that's um, Hugo Boss's Boss Bottle the reason I've picked that is the apple now I know I know because obviously Human flesh tastes like pork, apparently, doesn't it? And what goes with pork? Apple, and obviously there's them warm spices in there. Yeah, I know it's dark. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. But I do think it's kind of the, the perfect one for that. And obviously they were quite stupid, uh, really, trying to interact with them. But they do get away. So for the Lester Guardians, is boss bottled. So yeah, next they end up on this island uh, where there's a, a sorceress called Circa and um, she takes a few men to like a luxurious palace where she like feeds them and what have you and uh, yeah, she ends up turning them into pigs, oops. Um, but anyway, uh, one of them gets away and goes and tells Odysseus who gets his very merry way there and um, starts to... Uh, sort of sweet talker and convince her he's immune to her magic thanks to Hermes who is a uh, one of the Greek gods not the absolutely atrocious uh, delivery service that's changed its name to pretend it's not Hermes but still atrocious anyway rant over um yeah so he goes there he charms her and she uh she takes I suppose a bit of pity and uh quite likes him so she um ends up turning them back to humans and it's her that sort of advises him that they need to sort of uh, head to the underworld next to talk to someone uh, in in the dead, uh, in the underworld. Um, what I've picked for for circus kind of the, the fragrance of this section is black opium from Yves Saint Laurent. And the reason I've picked that is because obviously this woman is going to be a bit of a seductress. She's she's an immortal sorceress, so she's probably. Um, very beautiful it's obviously as we know black opiums this dark kind of sweet intoxicating florals a bit of musks that that hint of coffee it's just dark and it's very seductive like i imagine this um sorceress to be and um also it's it's nowadays it's it's because it's of its age it's a little bit fun and mischievous like obviously she was and um, even though he was immune to it, I imagine most men can't be immune to uh, black opium. So yeah, the circus is a uh, black opium from Yves Silleron. So yeah, the next place was obviously the underworld, as you can see I'm walking down there. Let's pretend it's not very sunny as well. Um, and what does he do in the underworld? Well, he needs to obviously find the, the prophet uh, Teresas who um, was going to tell him what he needs to do to get home. Um, and he does eventually catch up with him as he's the kind of, you know, down in this scary place. And um, basically he tells him that, obviously, Poseidon, 
I told you Poseidon would be back, didn't I? I hate him for uh, blinding Poly Polymetheus, who was obviously his son. You know, makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, the these people are, are really unprofessional and clowns. Will they ever make it back anyway? Um, and he, he then goes on to tell him, if you don't disturb the oxen of the sun god on their island, and maybe one day you will get back to Ithaca. You know, yeah, yeah, sounds a bit cryptic, doesn't it? But anyway, on on the way out um, to go back to the ships, he uh, comes across his mum, uh, obviously his dead mum, and uh, she explains um, what happened to her and how how she died. And obviously she died of a broken heart and kind of grief and stress because she was missing uh, missing him. So yeah, anyway. Um, the fragrance I've picked for that is, is quite obvious, isn't it? It's Anubis. It is, um, obviously Anubis was the um, Egyptian god of death, so that goes. But it's also quite dark, smoky, mysterious. It's quite dry, like you imagine the underworld in, in Greece and that area would be. Kind of, uh, you know, smells a little bit um, sort of unnerving with this, it, these sweet incenses and... The, the kind of dead mummies and, and whatnot, and obviously there'd be a lot of uh, dead folks down in the underworld, wouldn't there? So yeah, I think it goes really well, and also thinks it will kind of um, represent what what they were feeling as well, that, that kind of mystery. But obviously going to the underworld, a place where no one returns, will be quite a, a scary prospect, and it all goes together really well. So yeah, for the underworld, is uh, Anubis from Papillon Fragrances. Right. So next up on this little journey, the um, the get the ship gets drawn towards the island of the Sirens, and now we all know what the Sirens are. These kind of uh, vicious sea mer people who entice sailors in with their beauty and their song, and um, obviously then eat them. Now. Cleverly, Circa had given uh, uh, Odysseus a little bit of advice and got them to kind of wax all of his sailors' ears so that as they passed the island, they weren't enticed there. And um, Odysseus himself, um, I believe, asked his, uh, his sailors to tie him to the mast. And until they passed the island, no matter how much he begged or or moaned on or tried to get them to get him down to take them towards the island he said to just leave him there so that's that was kind of the clever plan to avoid that disaster uh, which worked but what I picked for these sirens is a uh, Mugler's alien now why have I picked that because it's quite a dark kind of enticing fragrance it's, it's not like anything at the time you'd really ever smelt before them um, dark floral jasmines that kind of alien jasmine if you like and the musks it, it, it's really enticing it's really seductive and whatnot and i think that would represent these sirens really quite perfectly and i think anyone walking past that kind of fragrance like myself would be drawn to it would be wanting to get to know um these women these creatures a bit more and i just think it represents it perfectly so for the sirens is mugler's alien the original one right so the next part of the journey leaves uh, odysseus with a really difficult choice there's two sides of the these cliffs if you sail close to one there's a whirlpool it is called carabidis who creates whirlpools in the sea and then on the other side is Skyler, who's a six-headed beast who kind of jumps out of the cliffs and obviously eats some of your sailors, six of them as it happens. So obviously Odysseus is, is faced with a really difficult kind of decision. And it's where the lesser of two evils kind of a proverb saying comes from, if you like. Or caught between a rock and a hard place kind of. It's that, you know what I mean. But anyway, Odysseus is wise. If he goes for Charybdis or Charybdis, um, then obviously the entire ship is going to go down in one of these whirlpools and they'll all be gone. So he goes for the Skyler side and um, sacrifices six of his sailors. 
Not too sure how his sailors felt about this. He probably didn't tell them, did he? Would be wise not to, really. Um, so he goes that way, and the fragrance I've chosen for that. Now this is this leaves me with a kind of, I thought I'd go for a dilemma, of two fragrances I don't really like, but are eternally popular, and um, everybody loves them. So you know you'd wear it with a difficult choice, wouldn't you? What would I go for, Aventus or Baccarat Rouge Five Forty? Now then, Baccarat Rouge 540 will flatten everybody in sort of a 20 mile radius and you'll be stuck with it for days and days. It'll probably finish me off. Or Aventus, which everybody kind of, you know, loves and enjoys and it's a bit boring and what have you. But really, it's the lesser of two evils, so it would be uh, Creed Aventus, wouldn't it? And uh, this, this, is, this is one of them proverbial ones that I kind of love. And you'd love to be in Odysseus's head, wouldn't you, really? Because in reality, if you chose to sacrifice six of your people, if they found out that you knew this all along, they'd probably be you'd end up you'd all probably end up dead anyway, wouldn't you? So But yes, that's a, it's an interesting one. So that's uh Creed Aventus for Charobidis and Skyler. So next, they end up on the, on the island of Helios. Obviously, Helios is the sun god. And uh, Odysseus does remember Tereus' advice not to eat the cows of, uh, of Helios. So it all goes well, he says, to eat the food that they were given by um, Cersei. Um, and um, that lasts them a bit, so... They're stuck there about a month, and uh, Odysseus goes into the into the wilderness to to pray to the gods and uh, you know hope for a safe journey home and whatnot. Um, however, when he comes back, he's found out that the his idiot crew have actually slaughtered one of the cows and eaten it, and he's absolutely obviously he's, he's, he's fuming, isn't he? Really, he's quite quite angry. Um, so yeah, they set sail quickly. But however, Zeus uh, unleashes rage on them for doing this and creates a big massive storm where every single one of them is killed except Odysseus, who then drifts on to another island. Now obviously this is a quite easy one to pick, the kind of fragrance of Helios. And that's a reflection from Mas Milano, which is this ultra bright yellow almost radioactive like the surface of the sun beaming and blinding and i imagine um helios was a uh, a little miffed so he probably did glow even brighter and more blinding and um really in the end let's face it they got what they deserved odysseus did tell them they weren't really the best behaved or the smartest of crews where they were always up to some sort of nonsense or mischief but anyway, so yeah, for the island of Helios, uh, the sun god, I have picked uh, Mas Milano's reflection. So next, getting towards the end of the journey, Odysseus uh, gets swept up onto an island. And, um, you know, he, he gets uh, found by Calyp Calypso, who's like this immortal nymph type person who's kind of cursed to be alone she looks after people and ultimately they leave her and what have you but she looks after Odysseus for seven whole years trying to kind of convince him and make him her his her immortal husband obviously Odysseus isn't you know into this too much he's a bit fed up and he just what all he wants is to get home in it obviously he appreciates the kindness and whatever and eventually after seven years, Athena, kind of the goddess Athena, takes pity on him and asks Zeus to let him be released. So he is released eventually to kind of go on his merry old way back to back to Ithaca. And um, so, yeah, he's released. And what I've picked for that is a fragrance from Killian called Love and Tears. Now, it's not so much the smell of this one, it's more about the... Obviously, the tragedy of the name and, and, and what the fragrance is about. It's like this beautiful white floral. It's these beautiful jasmines and um, a bit of lily maybe in there. There's a lot more, but that's that's mainly what you're getting. It's kind of, the, I suppose, 
a beautiful love story, isn't it? Um, that what love stories always really the most beautiful ones always end in tragedy, don't they? So that kind of goes with this, because again, Calypso's not a bad. She's not a bad person. She's caring and whatnot, and all she wants is is that eternal love. But that that's not Odysseus, is it really? And the kindness of Athena to get him uh, released. So for. Uh, Calypso, the island of Calypso, um, I've picked Killian's Love and Tears. So yeah, as he's off on his merry way, that damn blooming Poseidon, still quite angry as you would be that he'd uh, blinded his son Polymetheus, um, is, is a bit miffed, a bit narked, so he starts a, a big storm which uh, blows... Um, Odysseus off course to an island of the the phony the phon, whatever the folk phonians uh where you know he's quite sad so he's he's washing himself down and uh this princess princess Norsica finds him and takes him along to her father Al Alcinius um and Alcinius is quite impressed by Odysseus and what a what a great man he appears to be so he asks him to uh, marry Al's, um, his daughter. But anyway, uh, you know, they're having a meal and there's some stories going around and um, Odysseus gets quite quite upset and obviously Alcidius wants to know Odysseus' story, what had happened. So he tells him all the tragedy and, and all the bad things and uh, Alcinius takes, takes great pity on poor Odysseus. Uh, so he gives him a ship which he then heads off the next day to Ithaca and the kind of the fragrance I've picked for that is is uh, from Swedoff and it's Sweden which is kind of this uh, it's raspberry <laughs> sweet lovely fruit it's got a bit of cipriol and, and whatnot in it it's got the little touches of leather in it so but it's all this mainly a woody kind of sweet fruity fragrance which is what I imagine this this kind of island to be like and what they're eating it's also got this kind of tender warmth. It's about the friendliness and the warmth of the Swedish people. So that kind of kind of fits with this, because obviously these people are warm and kind towards Odysseus and take pity on him and kind of give him that, that way to get home. So for um, the, the people, the, the Fenians Island, they have picked uh, Swedoff Sweden. So after ten long blooming years, Odysseus is back home on Ithaca. But is it going to be as simple as all that? Of course not. Anyways, he's trundling along to the palace and uh, Athena visits him and tells him that his palace is actually now full of suitors. But not to worry because his missus, uh, the old Penelope, she has uh, remained loyal the whole time. And... Um, been batting off these suitors and waiting for his return so anyway Athena thinks she's going to help him out a little bit and she puts in the mind of um, uh, Penelope to have a competition and and that the the winner of this competition will obviously get to be with her now obviously Athena sets it up so it's a competition that only Odysseus can win um, he does win woohoo uh, obviously and uh, they're reunited and I believe Odysseus then kills all the suitors as you do why not you know it's not like he's had a long journey of killing and misery but yeah uh, anyway what I picked for that for a, uh, that particular kind of uh, reunion on Ithaca is um, is Lochestra's uh, bouquet encore why have I picked that because it's an explosion of happiness like it it suggests it's an explosion of flowers, spices, warmth. It's the gorgeous tuberose. It's very um, beautiful, burnt orange smelling, like, you know, the sky at night, like a sunset, the end of this journey, everyone getting to be happy and living happily ever after. So for the kind of the return home to Ithaca, and is re reuniting with uh, Penelope, who he's not been too loyal to, by the way, is uh, Lorchestra's bouquet encore, and everything could be happy and wonderful. Look, there's the palace, 
We're home now, smelling of wonderful rich tuberos and flowers and spices. Yay, we're home. The end of the story. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. It's just a little, I suppose it's self-indulgent, but it's like talking about things that we're interested in, and as we know, oh great, literary stories, and this is an exciting one, and kind of get to shoehorn some fragrances in that kind of match. Now, I think everyone who watches me knows you're not going to get a video about compliments or beast mode or getting um, laid, inverted commas as they call it, and all that jazz and... You know, that's just, it's just not me and yeah, I mean there'll be more of these ones, obviously there'll be more of my normal kind of lists of, of nonsense and uh, little reviews of this and that, um, but yeah, thanks for enduring this very long epic. So how would you send this fine journey, have you got any uh, favourite stories, Greek stories, right, thanks, bye folks.